Welcome everyone to the Senior Living Expo session titled Vacation for Life at the Canterbury. I'm Kristen A, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Episcopal Communities and Services, ECS, and I'm excited to be here today. Before we get started, I wanted to note that all of your cameras have been turned off and your microphones have been muted. We will allow time after the presentation for a question and answer session. So in order to submit a question, which you can do at any time during the presentation, just take your mouse and hover over the bottom of the screen. You should see a chat icon at the bottom. If you click that, a box will open up either in the center or the right of your screen that will allow you to type in a question. And you can choose an option of either sending your question directly to presenters only or to everybody so everybody can see your question. If you have a question that is for a specific person, I will in just a few minutes add each of our presenters and the topic they're gonna be discussing so you can address your questions directly to them if that's important to you. With that, our agenda for today, hosted by Episcopal Communities and Services, we will share with you our creative living philosophy and why we're so passionate about it. Then we will review a little bit about how our operations works and supports that philosophy, and then talk about financial obligations, assessment, strength, and qualifications, and then follow up with the foundation and how it supports the organization, followed by our question and answer period. So again, you can submit questions at any time. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jackie, our Director of Life Enrichment. Jackie. Thank you, Krista. When you become a resident of an ECS community, you have not only chosen a wonderful place to live, but a wonderful lifestyle. We don't believe in bringing you an activities program. We believe in presenting you with options and choices to live your best life. Therefore, a lifestyle. We do this through lifelong learning, fitness, social events, wonderful outings, adventures, and experiences. We'll explore all of those a little bit more as we move through what it means to live through creative living. So what does creative living mean to our residents? Let's explore the philosophy a little bit. We deliver diverse and stimulating opportunities for lifelong learning, growth, and fulfillment in an accessible atmosphere that is welcoming, inclusive, and respectful to all. To provide education, cultural, and recreational offerings, Creative Living harnesses the wealth of knowledge, talent, and experience of the residents and collaborates with local partners and resources in the greater community. Now that you've seen the philosophy, let's look a little deeper at the different pieces. Creative living can be broken down into seven key areas. Partnerships, lectures, music, outings, social, one-time events, and the bucket list. Partnerships we'll look at a little further in, so I will begin with lectures. Lectures can be anything from professors to authors to explorers to experts in their field or even one of our residents who discusses something in their life. Perhaps it was a trip that they took, something from their field of study, or even a look back at something fascinating that happened in their life or career. Next, we have music. Music ranges from chamber music to specialty groups like the Whippenpuffs to fun dance music of the 50s, 60s, and beyond. Outings are taken to local points of interest, museums, art galleries, special events, wineries, and any other fun and interesting thing we can find. Social events take the form of parties, game nights, happy hours, um, often it, we have groups that meet to do colorful conversations, coffee hours, or just to meet up and chat. One-time special events are opportunities usually granted by partnerships we will discuss shortly, like a special concert from a visiting artist to the symphony. So those events are truly the really special ones because they're the once in a lifetime opportunities that we strive to bring our residents. And finally, we have the bucket list. The bucket list is for our most daring and we're hoping all of you are our most daring and want to explore these with us. The bucket list items include taking a ride on the slide outside the downtown LA building high up in the air. It could be a ride in NASCAR or an IndyCar, taking a spin in a go-kart or perhaps floating through the air in indoor skydiving. So we have a little bit of something for everyone. 
and we encourage our residents to take part in everything and explore all things of interest to them or perhaps to take a tour or a trip that they've always wanted to but never had the time until now. As I noted in our last slide, partnerships are a key component of the creative living lifestyle. They are unique to each community and the offerings of each are very different. A partnership is a formal agreement between a community and a local nonprofit in their area to offer once in a lifetime lectures, music or outings to the community and residents. Often they also come with volunteer opportunities for residents. What is the benefit of a partnership? Well, it's basically to build amazing relationships in our community and to offer outstanding experiences to our residents. With all of the wonderful programs that we offer our residents, we haven't forgotten about fitness and mindfulness, two key components into living a long and healthy life. At each community, we offer the unique ECS program, Live Your Years. These fitness classes center on balance, strength, cardio, and hydro classes. We also offer meditation at some of our campuses. Each of these areas helps you to move forward in the best way possible so you can experience life to the fullest. Our communities also offer a wealth of specialty classes that are unique to each community. They include boxing, Zumba, Tai Chi, Kung Fu, dance, meditation, and yoga. And we also have been known to bring in goat yoga for those of you who are a little more adventurous with your fitness journey. So how did we adapt our robust creative living lifestyle to the COVID pandemic that took hold of everyone this past March? We did it through the use of in-house channels, YouTube, daily emails and communication, and balcony events. And then as a team, we evolved. How did we evolve? We went back to full calendars. We also added in-house channels fully stocked with movies, events, lectures, and entertainment. We took to Zoom. We taught our residents how to use the platform and held live lectures, live music, and live events, as well as all of the committee meetings and other events that they usually had in person on the computer. We attended small gatherings with residents outside, socially distanced, wearing masks so they could continue to see each other and have that social connection. And we took our balcony events to a higher level, inviting musicians, singers, and other entertainment to stroll about the building so residents could safely watch and enjoy things from the safety of their own balconies and windows. Why is our creative living team stronger because of our evolution through COVID-19? It is because of our adaptability. It is because of our multi-platform delivery, and it is because we are reaching all levels of care in our communities, including our assisted and memory care communities. We are sharing our wealth of programs between our communities, offering greater opportunities for our residents to remain engaged. We are also finding solutions for the future, something that we don't take lightly because now that we know how to present things to people in their own apartment, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. What makes our programs different from what other communities are offering? Well, we believe in never allowing age or ability to dictate what our residents are capable of or wish to do. The beauty of life is in the choices. We strive to offer a wealth of them be it a lecture, music, dance, fitness, or something more daring like a ride in a NASCAR. Just like choosing your side trips on a cruise, you choose your experience with us and you enjoy the journey. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Terry Quigley, who is the Chief Operations Officer for ECS Operations. Hi everyone, I'm Terry Quigley. I'm the Senior Vice President of Operations and the COO here at Episcopal Communities and Services. At ECS, aside from our residents, our staff are our most important asset and resource. Our team members are carefully selected to make sure they understand and subscribe to our mission, which is our very reason for being. 
Our mission is to create exceptional communities and services for seniors. Aside from our mission, our core values guide our decisions every day. Our team members receive training to ensure that they understand our core values, such as compassion, courage, integrity, respect, and imagination, and know how those values look and impact how they perform their job every day. Because our team members are so valuable and create an important part of your experience in our communities, we invest heavily in them on an ongoing basis. We not only pay them competitively with a valuable benefit package, but we also encourage lifelong learning through our employee education funds. If they should experience an emergency in their lives, we support them with our staff assistance fund for emergencies, also known as SAFE, providing them a safety net and a partnership with ECS. And every year we ask them how we're doing with an employee engagement survey to be sure we are paying attention to the things that are important to them. Those team members provide our residents with resort style services and amenities that you would expect on a great vacation. As a resident, you have a worry-free lifestyle knowing that the details are taken care of, such as regularly scheduled housekeeping, ensures that your home is clean and ready to welcome fellow travelers, families, or neighbors. You get to enjoy beautiful grounds and landscaping that is waiting for you without the headaches of sprinklers to repair or weeds to pull. If you've ever wanted a pool or simply wish you'd never had to maintain one again, we have you covered. Whether that's for lap swimming, aquatic exercises, or just a relaxing float, our pools are waiting for you. And finally, everyone knows that food is key to any vacation. Our dining options will meet your expectations with our executive chefs on site to create menus and meals that are healthy, delicious, and sourced with local ingredients. Lifetime vacations also come with security and comfort of knowing that should you need help of any kind, we are only a call away. Our nursing team can help you receive the support you need and want, whether it's for just a short illness or a long-term plan for assistance. We make sure that you get the help you need in the way you want it. We're pet-friendly communities with lots of life enrichment activities that give you the opportunity for lifelong learning. The very best part is that vacationing with us is good for you. In a study of over 5,000 people living in senior communities, and they were compared with to roughly 1,000 similar people who were not, those living in communities, or as we say, or on vacation for life, were more satisfied with life, were more optimistic, have more social contact, reported better health, were more active, and felt a higher sense of purpose. So we at ECS are your partners in this vacation and are here to help you create whatever vision you have that includes safety, adventure, friendship, family, learning, reflection, wherever it takes you, we are here with you and we look forward to meeting you. With that, I'll pass on our presentation to Charlie Riley, our Chief Financial. Hello, I'm Charlie Riley, the CFO for ECS. Now we'll discuss some of the financial considerations to think about when moving to a life plan community. ECS is organized as a not-for-profit organization. ECS is governed by an independent board of directors made up of leaders from the business, real estate, legal, and healthcare fields. The board ensures the organization serves its mission of creating exceptional communities and services for seniors. There are no owners seeking profits from ECS communities. ECS reinvests continuously in its communities and strengthening its capacity to serve seniors. There are no returns on investment or dividends or payouts to owners. When you move into an ECS community, ECS commits to caring for you for the rest of your life. ECS provides the assurance of a demonstrable history of operating strength, delivering exceptional communities with healthy operating margins over many years and decades, in fact. 
ECS reinvests continuously in its communities, keeping them like new and maintains sizable reserves that preserve value and buffer the inevitable uncertainties we encounter. We employ the best thinking from the nation's leading investment banks to continuously optimize our capital structure. You should be assured by the independent assessment of ECS financial strength found in our audit and attested to by Fitch Ratings. I encourage you to download our latest audit report from the website, and now I'll go into a little bit more detail about our rating from Fitch. Only about 20% of life plan communities are rated by the credit rating agencies, Fitch, S&P, and Moody's. Within that small 20% of rated life plan communities, only about a quarter receive a rating of A. ECS holds an A- rating on its bonds from Fitch, a member of a tiny universe of strength, putting it in the top 5% based on independently attested financial strength. So now turning to the specifics of moving into a life plan community. What is an entrance fee and why uh, an entrance fee? An entrance fee is the sum of money paid up front to secure a home. It makes community living a little more affordable and provides greater predictability. It covers the entire continuum of care without having to move to another community provides a sense of stability without the month-to-month -month revolving door of neighbors moving in and out. Uh, it's security and peace of mind of having a plan in place to care for you for the rest of your life. It's affordable for almost anyone who's owned a home in Los Angeles or Orange County for a long time. And again, ECS commits to caring for all of its residents for the rest of their lives. Now I'll talk about how an entrance fee works. Non-refundable entrance fees carry a smaller upfront price tag, but provide no return of the initial payment after living three years at a community. Refundable entrance fees are higher in cost, but at least 75% of the fee is returned upon reoccupancy after moving or passing away. Entrance fees are based on the size of a resident, its location, its view, and other specific amenities. Incoming residents undergo qualification, much like applying for a mortgage. Now I'll go through some options and a simple example of how entrance fees work. A 90% reoccupancy benefit would be $100. That same residence, 75% uh, uh, reoccupancy benefit would be $90. The non-refundable entrance fee option, where its refundability declines over the first 36 months somebody lives at a community would be $65. These options provide customization to individual circumstances and your own financial planning goals. Now Robin McCarthy, Director of Development, will share a few things about the ECS Foundation. Lending a hand as part of Episcopal Communities and Services is Episcopal Communities and Services Foundation. My name is Robin McCarthy. I'm the Director of Development, and in my position, I oversee the work and commitment of the foundation. Episcopal Communities and Services Foundation raises funds for several programs. The largest program is referred to as Creative Housing and Services, or CHS. CHS refers to our affordable housing communities. ECS manages three low-income or affordable communities, housing over 270 residents. These residents exist on approximately $1,000 per month. That's $12,000 annually and well below the poverty level seen in LA County. Of this $1,000 per month, 30% then goes to cover their rent. There are programs like the Healthy Harvest Market, which provide small quantities of low-priced produce on site for these residents to purchase. There's also Creative Generations, which brings together our seniors with oftentimes preschoolers who then can sit and enjoy. It's like having your own built-in grandparent. 
Another program is called By Your Side Vigil Companions. To die alone is a very sad thing. But through volunteers with the By Your Side program, individuals are trained to go out and sit with those individuals who either are very ill or who simply may be alone as they are dying. This companion program provides comfort, often to an individual who may not have anyone. We sadly refer to them as unfamily, but it is obviously a very difficult situation and our volunteers do tremendous work. For the SAFE program, this stands for Staff Assistance Fund for Emergencies. We lend a helping hand to staff members and our employees who simply may need something at a time of difficulties. We've paid for funerals. We have certainly paid for individuals to suddenly fly back for the funeral of a parent. We've covered unexpected car breakdowns. We've helped with last minute needs for rent and the list goes on. We're never quite sure what that next request may be, but we want to be there to lend a helping hand. Certainly the recent pandemic has taken its toll on so many and Episcopal Communities and Services was no different. Through the foundation, we were able to ensure that no resident was food insecure. We ensured that no resident went hungry. We're grateful to our many partners who provided bounties of food for so many. We received oranges from Huntington Library and Gardens that we were able to distribute to our low-income residents. Council member Herb Wesson stepped up with boxes of food for residents at St. James. And we received a tremendous amount of food donated by the Torrance Farmers Market. To date, we estimate that we've received over 15,000 pounds of food but it's also what it means to our residents. It also means that they never had to go hungry. Oftentimes it means that they did not have to travel outside their own community to find food. We certainly didn't want them getting on a bus or exposing themselves to others. So that made a difference in the lives of so many. We are proud of the partnerships that we've created and the community contacts who helped us truly make an impact. And we feel strongly that the work of the foundation has a very positive impact on not only our residents and staff, but also the community around us. We are proud to be part of the communities where we live, be it Casa de los Amigos in Redondo, be it St. James in Koreatown, or St. John's in Costa Mesa. Again, we're here for our residents and we are here for our staff. In 2019, the foundation provided nearly $500,000 in assistance. That assistance was through programs, but it was also through direct dollars. The programs that support the residents and staff truly make a difference. Helping staff with things like their education, but also when they have an emergency, is what ECS is about. But also ensuring that residents are well taken care of whether they live in one of our affordable communities or a life plan community. It really is about making an impact. At the foundation, we are particularly grateful for the donors, the funders, and the many sponsors that we receive that help us truly make an impact. Are you in need of answers? We're happy to answer any of your questions and provide you more details or who to reach out to if you would like to speak to someone at ECS. Thank you, Robin, and thank you to all the panelists. Uh, we do have some questions that have come in to the panelists, so I'm going to open those up. And if you want to um, review the questions, some of them are typed into the chat section. So if you scroll down to the bottom of your screen, and hover over, um, there should be a menu bar. You can click on the chat icon and a, um, a menu should come up to the right of your screen and show you some of the questions that have come in. So the first one's for Terry. Um, how does the dining program work? 
Sure, it's a great question because food matters to everybody, right? Um, we have three life plan communities at Episcopal Communities and Services, and each of them is a little bit different in their dining program, but every life plan community in, includes in their monthly fee uh, a number of meals or dining dollars that are used at the discretion of the resident. So whether you want to um, have breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whether you want to go down for a milkshake and some french fries, um, whether you want to entertain a guest, um, it's up to the resident to use those um, those meal credits or those dining dollars at their discretion. Great. Thank you, Terry. Um, second question is for Jackie. Um, with all your program choices, and it sounds like you have many, um, do the residents have an opportunity to help with the program choices? And how does that work? So the simple answer is yes. Um, every community is a little bit different. Um, some have um, committees for activities or what they're now calling life enrichment or a resident can join our Creative Living Academy, um, which we go to for all of our lifelong learning suggestions. Um, or it's as simple as making a suggestion directly to one of the staff or putting it in one of our many um, suggestion boxes. Um, we often look to our residents to supply us with the ideas and the things that we present to our community. So it's very much um, a two-way street um, in that respect. Um, and often we'll send out questionnaires to our residents asking them for ideas for outings or bucket lists. So I would say about 90% of our programming comes directly from our communities. Wow, outstanding. And then Terry, other than programs, um, how do the residents get involved at the communities? Do they have an opportunity? Sure, they have lots of opportunities. Residents can be as involved as they want to be or not, um, depending on their interest. We have resident opportunities for leadership. If residents wanna be involved as a uh, board member or a resident representative on our governance boards, they also have the opportunity to um, uh, participate in a resident council, which really is the leadership group on, in each of our life plan communities. There are committees, a variety of committees, um, depending on your interest, whether you're interested in the dining program, whether you're interested in landscaping and have uh, a background in gardening, whether you want to participate, as Jackie said, in life enrichment. There are lots of committees and opportunities to provide your input um, to the entire community. And then um, there's always, as Jackie mentioned in our Creative Living Academy, an opportunity to share your talents and gifts if you have a skill that the rest of the residents you want to share with the rest of the community, we're um, happy to have you participate in that opportunity um, through the Creative Living Academy. So residents have many, many avenues um, to participate and create community um, in their home. Wow, great, thank you. Uh, let's see, the next question's for Charlie. Um, what is the reoccupancy you talked about? as it relates to the entrance fee, and are any of the costs tax deductible? And I also see that uh, we have a question from uh, Diana about uh, where the locations are. And so uh, Montecedro is located in Altadena, Diana. Um, Canterbury is located in Rancho Palos Verdes, and the Covington is located down in Elisa Viejo. So um, uh, that those are the locations uh, for the ECS communities. Uh, reoccupancy is the point at which we uh, sell a residence uh, from, one re from one resident to a new resident. And it, it's at that point that uh, the refundable portion of your entrance fee would be returned to you, whether that's 75%, 90%, or a small piece of the uh, 36 month, if uh, that's uh, the way you choose. And with regard to tax deductibility, <clears throat> each year, we uh, look at the entrance fees and the uh, monthly service fees and determine which portions of those would qualify as prepaid uh, medical expenses. And uh, based on your own tax situation, we encourage you to uh, work with your tax counsel and advisors to understand, but there you know, typically is a piece of that that is deductible. Thank you. Uh, there's a new question here is, what are the ethnic demographics of your residents? And Terry, do you want to take that one? Sure, we have a, um, a very broad and diverse group of residents throughout our communities. Um, it, although our name is Episcopal um, Communities and Services is an homage to our history, 
um, we have uh, residents from all faiths, um, as you can imagine, in all backgrounds and um, uh, ethnicities. So it's we, uh, one of our core values is diversity and inclusion. So that's very important to us too. Outstanding. Okay, so um, let's see. Another question is COVID. Um, do you test your residents before they move in or are there, how does it test? work on site. And Terry, I'll send that back to you. Terry, can you? Sure, I can talk a little bit um, about uh, okay. our, our response to um, this pandemic that we've been dealing with here um, throughout the world over the last seven, almost eight months now. Um, new residents coming in, we're very fortunate that we were able to access testing for our residents and our staff very early um, as early as April. And so um, new residents coming in um, are tested before they come into the community and then are quarantined for a short period of time um, uh, with meals and services delivered to them as we continue to test them. Our goal is to get two negative tests um, that the CDC indicates is, means you are free of the virus at that time. We continue to test our staff um, our direct care staff has test every, tested every week to make sure that they are healthy and not bringing the virus into the community. Um, the rest of our staff is tested at least monthly as are our residents. So we think that testing is an important part of um, the response to this pandemic and um, has enabled us to create a campus of safety. We've had very good results um, in terms of keeping our residents and our staff safe and keeping the virus out of our communities. We, um, while we're not in quote unquote lockdown, um, the residents are certainly free to move about. We do have a variety of precautions in place to make sure that um, everybody can do that um, safely, whether that means wearing a mask or um, keeping a physical distance. Our, as Jackie indicated, our activities and our community lifestyle continues with some modifications. So we've, more of our activities are outside now um, while we can enjoy the beautiful Southern California weather. And as I said, um, have built the opportunity for people to continue to live together, socialize, um, be active in their life, but to do so with appropriate precautions. Great, and I think, uh, can you guys hear me? I'm losing my audio. So um, there's a question here about the average age of entry. Um, Terry, do you have that for each of our communities? I, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but in each community is a little bit different, but generally we have residents as early as in their 60s and, um, and, and everything beyond that. Our average age at entrance is probably about 80 to 83, depending on the community and whether you're looking at independent living or assisted living, memory care, we even have skilled nursing in some of our campuses. So the age at entry um, varies a little bit, but probably we've got a pretty active um, uh, 80 year old is probably our typical resident moving in, but lots of younger folks too. Okay, thank you. And then I've got a question here on um, from Everett Oswald on more interested in seeing the facilities. So I'm going to put up on the in the chat our website um, so that you can visit and see all of our communities and there's lots to visit. So I'm going to put that up right now. And in the meantime, um, Charlie, there's a question other than entrance fees and monthly fees, what other costs might there be? That really uh, covers it. You know, uh, there's a monthly service fee and your entrance fee. Um, if uh, you know, there's you have guests for dinner. There's a little charge for that beyond a certain level. Um, you know, um, that 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 really makes it predictable. And uh, as we said, have a plan, and it's all covered. Great. Um... Let's see now, there was a question that came in um, regarding, do you have to wear a jacket to dinner, to dine? Um, Elizabeth, are you on? Did you wanna answer that or we can send it over to Terry? Oh, there's Elizabeth. Um, hi everyone. 
Um, jackets are not required, but we do expect that you're not going to wear shorts or, or a hat in the dining room. And we just want you to look respectable, you know, um, just a nice, a nice shirt for men and, and a pair of slacks is great. Great. Do you, um, I'll, I'll send this one back to you, Elizabeth, too. Do you provide doctors at the Canterbury or do we have, do we get to keep our own? So we happen to have skilled nursing at the Canterbury and there is a doctor that works with our residents in that um, level of living. But you keep your own doctors and when you come in, if you're coming in from out of state or a distance away from the Canterbury, you are welcome to speak with our nurse and she can talk to you about what's going on with you and she could always recommend someone. She has worked with all of our residents and knows different people's condition and can advise on who she thinks would be a good, a good uh, choice. Okay, and another question, Elizabeth, for you is, um, I'm not Episcopalian. Do I, um, is there an issue with entry or services there at the Canterbury? No, no, Episcopal Communities and Services, as you've heard before, is non-denominational. And, you know, we accept all faiths and there is no requirement to attending certain types of services, although we do offer services and we're so fortunate. We have a full time clergy. Each of our communities has their own chaplain and they reach out to the greater community with relationships with rabbis and priests and they make sure that our residents are getting their spiritual needs. If they can't even go off campus to to do it themselves, we bring it right there on campus. Uh, great. Um, Robin, a question for you is, if I wanted to get involved in By Your Side program you mentioned, how would I do that? Well, first let me compliment you. By Your Side is an amazing program and you can visit our website and simply look up the By Your Side program. Each of the volunteers goes through a dedicated training session. Um, right now there is one going on, but they're also then part of the training program and there's also um, situations where they go in and they have counseling so they also interact with other individuals. So it's a great program, but check it out on our website. Okay, and then um, I, Elizabeth, I'm not sure if I, we can ask a couple more questions, but there is somebody that wants to see an apartment or a room accommodation. Do you have any that you can pull up that we can share your screen? Ah, okay. If, if that, otherwise, we can um, go ahead and offline send, um, send that to you. And again, yeah, our... I am more than willing to share and Patty Blue works with me and we can pull her up so you can see who she is as well. We both are offering tours. We're doing live tours by appointment and we're doing virtual tours as well. And on those virtual tours, we can show you lots of different photos of the community and the different models of our apartments. That's right. And we've been also working very hard to uh, get a model unit together to safely show people the interiors of apartments so they can come in and poke around in the kitchen, open up the cupboard doors and, you know, get very familiar with the storage and, and the different um, ways that you can put furniture into units. And um, so that is something that we can safely do um, right now, tours with CDC guidelines in mind. And uh, when you come and arrive for your tour, you would sign in, get temperature checked. We'll ask you to make sure you have a mask on. And then we would escort you um, through different parts of the community um, safely. And so that you can kind of get an idea of the community and, and again, get into a model unit. Um, in, in terms of showing different floor plans, um, what we can't show you in person with the model we can give you an idea virtually um, by delving into those floor plans. So, um, Patty, what availability do you have right now? Um, if I wanted a one bedroom or a two bedroom, or what are your accommodations? You want to talk a little bit about that? Right now, um, at the Canterbury, we have um, some one bedrooms um, located in independent living, and you can also put services in place too if you might need a little help but we do because of the covid um, epidemic we've had some opportunity um, 
Canterbury has historically had a wait list where people have been waiting for quite a while, um, usually at least six months for a one bedroom, often for a two bedroom. Historically, it was, you know, about a year. Um, however, um, this pandemic has created an opportunity now for people who may be interested in coming sooner um, to a one bedroom apartment. And we always encourage you, if you are still interested and want to be strategic and proactive, even if you're not quite ready yet, um, it's a great idea to get on the Canterbury wait list and let that, that um, date um, work for you over time so that you're in a very good priority position when you are ready to come. But there's opportunity now, and that's the good news. It's refreshing to be able to say that. <laughs> um, it, it, it is not something that we've been able to say to people for a number of years. So if you are interested in a one bedroom, please give us a call. We've got some nice ones available. So um, Patty, if I wasn't interested in a one bedroom and I wanted a two bedroom, do I go on a wait list or can I move into the one bedroom and then move after? The two That's bedrooms? a great question, Krista, and absolutely. And, and we, we will um, move you in if you are interested in coming right away, but the uh, you know, floor plan of your choice is not available yet. We can help you move into the one bedroom and then you would get a nice priority for the next two bedroom floor plan that you prefer um, so that you could, you know, go ahead and, and be at the top to take that apartment. So we are incentivizing. <laughs> right. Um, so I think we've, we've gone through our questions here. Does anybody on the panel have any other comments um, questions that weren't asked that we should share with the, the group i'd like to I, mention I'd just like to, oh sorry terry sorry i just wanted to add to patty's comments about the opportunities right now in addition to having some units available at, at the canterbury um, i'm sure that everybody um, at, here at the expo knows that real estate prices are strong right now and it's a great opportunity and a great time um, to take advantage of that if you're thinking about a move or um, um, uh, selling your home and considering an opportunity to community with us together. Um, now is a really good time to do that. If you'd like um, the team at the Canterbury or one of our life plan communities to put you in contact with a real estate um, agent or someone who can help get you a, an estimate of the value on your home, we're happy to do that too. So it's just a great time um, to take advantage of some exceptional conditions in the real estate market as well. Okay, great. Elizabeth, did you have a comment? No, I just wanted to add, I know someone asked a question of what are the costs and that was discussed, the entrance fee and the monthly service fee and the meals that guests might enjoy. Wanted to just mention that some, we have, we're very fortunate. We have an in-house care agency. It's called Artful Home Care. And so those might be some added charges, but it just depends. You can add as you need it. You can add it and take it off. It's, it's very flexible. And it's, it's worked with the resident if they want their family involved in some of those decisions and with the nurse. So just wanted to let them be aware of that. Okay. And, and one nice thing is a lot of communities don't even have it, you know, in-house, an in-house agency. They'll go outside. So the fact that we have trained people and all of our staff is fingerprinted and background checked, but the fact that we have an in-house agency, I think speaks volumes for us. That is true. And then related to that, um, there was a question, um, Elizabeth, is there someone to drive me to medical appointments? Oh, yes, we've got transportation and they can get you to your doctors and dentist appointments within a 10 mile radius of the community. Um, and we've got a limo and a few vans to get people where they need to go. Outstanding. There's also um, somebody just had a, a comment and wanted to know how many people were on this webinar, there are 28 people online right now. Um, so um, I did want to just share too that um, if you're interested, we've got a, a webinar series coming up. Um, there's going to be one's going to be about real estate. That's November 17th, and why is it a good time to sell? On December 1st, we're going to have a resident panel, so you'll be able to ask residents directly 
some questions and what it's like to live at the Canterbury today. And then we're gonna follow up with a downsizing and moving expert. So those will all be posted on our website within the next week. Again, I did put up our um, website into the chat here. Um, so take a, take a visit there. There's also, Malika, I don't know if you can share the very last slide. I believe it has Patty and Elizabeth's contact information that they would be happy to give you a virtual tour or an online tour of the Canterbury. Um, so we, we are open to that as well. And with all the safety precautions of COVID, of course, to keep in mind. Um, I think that is it. I don't see any other questions, any other comments from the panel. So thank you all for joining us. I really appreciate it. And it really is like a vacation when you move into the Canterbury. So hopefully you learned something today. And um, again, reach out to Patty and Elizabeth for more information. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.